Well, hello everyone, and it's another What's for Dinner time. I am back in the kitchen cooking up yummy stuff. And I'm so glad you're here with me to see what all we've had in the last little while around here. And I hope that you get some inspiration or some ideas, maybe some things that you haven't thought of in a while that you want to plug in to your dinner menu in the next couple of weeks. So all that being said, let's get started, y'all. Good morning. I am putting this um, remainder of the round steak that I used last night for our um, steak bites and gnocchi. So I'm putting what's left of that. It's not a bunch, but it's a pretty good amount. And I'm going to make a beef stew. A, a round steak obviously is not super, super tender. Um, so this has already been pan fried, but it will tenderize even more as it's in this crock pot today with a beef stew that I'm making. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this in and I'll bring you along and show you how we make this beef stew today. All right, I am gonna add in one package of brown gravy mix. And I'm gonna add in two cups of cold water. And I'm gonna let this go on low here for a little while and then I'm gonna add in my vegetables, carrots, potatoes, get those in there next. Okay, this has been in here now for maybe about two hours, not quite. Just the meat and onion, I did add some onion in. And then that gravy packet. There we go. And then now I'm gonna come in with my carrots and potatoes. I have three potatoes and three pretty large carrots, and I have them chunked just about the size as I have my meat. So everything's kind of about the same size when you're eating it. It's the goal. So I'll get those nestled in here, and then I'm not doing anything else in the way of seasonings right now. I'm just basically letting the meat continue to get tender and now I'm going to obviously going to be cooking these vegetables. So I'm going to get my um, lid back on and let it keep chugging along. It's a very rainy day here today so perfect for beef stew. I'm going to make a pan of homemade cornbread. Okay next I'm going to add in some dry seasoning. So I'm going to sprinkle on some garlic powder I'm going to sprinkle on a little bit of parsley. I have little helpers here in the kitchen with me. I'll show you in a minute. This is rosemary. We have rosemary. You do? Yeah. Did you grow rose in your garden? Did you grow it? No, it's somewhere in front of our house or sidewalk. Oh, Aunt Mommy grew it up there. It's somewhere like, like where. Where like, like the back thing, there's a little of it right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was Worcester that I put in, and then I am putting, okay, just one minute. I'm putting in a whole can. And guys, right here is the point that my memory card was out of space and I did not know it. I was just talking to the little boys and working on this stew here and didn't even realize it. So I put in the tomato paste, just stirred it around a little bit and put my lid back on. This is pretty much all that I did to this beef stew. Now I'm going to show you the cornbread. I always make my cornbread in this exact little skillet here. This is used for nothing but cornbread. Um, we were hungry for cornbread, hadn't made it in a good long while, but I have showed it here on my channel many times. I'll link a couple videos below for you if you want to look at those. I always use bacon grease and get it good and hot and pour in the cornbread mixture, bake it in a hot oven, and voila. This puffed up so high. This made the most beautiful pan of cornbread. So absolutely delicious. Went perfect with this beef stew. This just hit the spot, and um, yeah, I have to say, one of the prettiest pans of cornbread I've made. 
I didn't follow a particular recipe for this beef stew. I looked at several, but I basically ended up using some things that I had on hand. I left out some things um, that I just didn't want to use. Like I don't use wine in beef stew. I know that's a big uh, popular ingredient. Um, most recipes do not call for a package of brown gravy mix, but I definitely wanted to add that in. So I just kind of looked at some and decided what I wanted to go with. So you can see here how I have made this one. It was delicious. The um, tomato paste, the Worcester, really give it a real distinctive flavor, very rich flavor. And just simple ingredients here to pull together a very hearty stew with that cornbread was just delicious. This was our soup of the week for this week. Let's go back in time to the day before. I referenced making these steak bites with gnocchi. Um, that is what I'm getting into. My hot iron skillet here are these steak bites. So I'm gonna show you the marinade that I made that these marinated in all day long. Super easy. So let me just show you that real quick. Two tablespoons of lemon juice. One tablespoon of olive oil. tablespoon of Worcester and one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Let's do one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, a little less than one teaspoon of salt, and a half teaspoon of pepper. I'm just going to measure about half in there. And that is the marinade, you guys. So easy. So I'm going to get this all stirred together and then I'm going to dice up my steak and get it tossed in here. Leave a comment below if you use any screen or anything like this to kind of prevent the ginormous mess <laughs> that you get on your stove from frying things. This helped a little bit, but I still had a mess on my stove. But this is definitely the cast iron uh, frying week. I moved up to my next size cast iron skillet to fry this steak in. I had marinated this steak all day long. I'll have the recipe typed out down for you below. Um, I followed a specific recipe for this meal. It's a shocker, I know, but I did. And I'll have the recipe typed down below. The marinade was very easy, all ingredients that you typically have around your house. I batch cooked this. I cooked half of it first and then added in the other half so I would just have uh, not so much of a crowded skillet. It still left quite a bit of liquid, I guess, just from the marinade. I wish it hadn't done that so I would have had a more of a crisp outside on these steak pieces, but I don't really know how I could have prevented that, I guess. I'm not quite sure. Here is my kettle boiling um, water for my gnocchi. So I'm just using a package of gnocchi, following the directions for that, which is about a three minute cook time. You can't get much quicker than that. Now, if you've never cooked with gnocchi before, these things do, unless you just put them in by like spoonfuls, which you could, they do splash out. So be prepared. You don't want to get hot water splashed up on you. After I removed all of the meat from the skillet, just kind of wiped it with a paper towel. You add butter to the skillet and you're going to just start sauteing some um, garlic. And that goes really quick. It went quicker for me than I was prepared for it to, too. Um, but this skillet just gets so hot, retains its heat so much, that garlic just goes in a flash. So keep your eye on that. But you just saute around this garlic, and then you put your gnocchi in this garlic and butter. So yes, you can already imagine how delicious this is going to be. So I just dipped my gnocchi out using a slotted spoon instead of straining off the whole thing. It's right there in that pot cooking. I'm just going to move that over spoon by spoon and start getting that all coated in this garlic butter mixture. And 
and in comes the steak. It's hard to say, really, who's the star of the show. We love steak around here, but this gnocchi was delicious. I used about half of the steak that I had sauteed up, and of course you already saw in the previous clip that I used the other half to make beef stew. The whole thing had marinated. I just went ahead and fried the whole thing up, but I could see that I did not need all of it for this particular meal. So that was great. It worked out great. And we had a yummy beef stew with the other half of it. But back to this one. This is a very simple meal, actually. Um, the marinade provides great flavor for the steak. And then, of course, the butter, oh, the garlic. Um, it's a simple, simple meal with great flavor. And it's just a different take with gnocchi. Generally, we have gnocchi like chicken gnocchi soup or, you know, something along that line. This was totally different. And I highly recommend you trying this. Very, very good. I'll have the exact recipe typed out down below. Now, this next meal I'm going to show you, we had company over this evening. So I was really happy to prepare this meal for all of us that night. I'm going to show you how I made the main dish and the side dishes for our meal. Everything was really delicious, turned out really good. And I'm just going to go through you through this and show you how I made everything. So first up, I'm going to show you how my mom used um, these few little things to sort of dress up a box of stuffing mix. So you want to use a box of stuffing mix, follow the package directions, but instead of using water, use the chicken stock if you can, or chicken broth. I use some water with the couple spoons of the dry chicken base in there. And then follow, use the butter, follow the directions, cook your stuffing and let that cool so you can work with it later. Um, another good trick is adding some fresh sliced onion in there. That kind of bumps up the flavor, but I'm going to show you how I make this here in just a little bit. All right, I've got a big dinner coming together for tonight. We've got um, some friends coming over and we're just gonna have a really good evening together. We're gonna do some planning for our church for the year. And I'm just excited about it. So um, normally I voice over and I probably will voice over some too, but I'm gonna go ahead and just talk to you here for a minute. I have showed these before on my channel. It's been a very, very long time though. I don't make scalloped potatoes real. Oh. Hang on guys. They're not even supposed to be going in this container. What am I thinking? Hang on. Let's do it right. Oh boy, this happens more in my kitchen than it doesn't, okay? Let's just be clear about all that. Let us begin again with the rock crock. This is what I'm supposed to be using instead of the other one. So let's start over. I'm using my rock crock. I love to do scalloped potatoes in this. This is by Pampered Chef. My daughter-in-law Abigail got this for me for Christmas a couple years ago. Let's start over. This pan is out for something else for a dish. Okay, so I don't even know what I was saying when I realized I was doing something crazy. So um, there we go. So I have made these before, but it's been a long time. I don't make scalloped potatoes real, real often, but I love them. I love them, but they're just a little bit more work, but they're worth it, and I wanted to make them for tonight. So the recipe calls for six to eight potatoes peeled and sliced. You want them pretty thin. The thicker they are, the longer it takes to bake in the oven. So pretty thin and pretty regular. If you won't start, you know, kind of getting them a certain size, try to stay with it because that'll help with even baking. So this recipe is from my um, Best of Amish fellowship meals and I love this one it's a good good recipe book and I'm using this one down here at the bottom the Hilda Bourne's scalloped potatoes that's the one I use every time I make scalloped potatoes so uh, I got my potatoes all peeled half of them are layered and now I'm gonna go in with flour salt and pepper and some onion and I'm going to show you as I make this, like I said, I'm making a big meal today and I'm going to bring you along providing I can keep my head and film everything that I need to be filming and not get busy and ahead of myself. So that happens sometimes. All right, let's get going on these potatoes. Okay, now that we've layered half of the potatoes and I diced, I sliced up a small onion and I kind of tucked those in here and there. I should have been layering those in with the potatoes, but 
Now you go in with one tablespoon of flour, and it's this middle layer here, this middle section where you stop and put in the flour, the salt, and the pepper. Potatoes can take a lot of salt, but we also have cheese going in here, so we don't want to over salt. We can always add salt to our plate if we don't feel like our potatoes are seasoned enough when we get them on our plate. So to each his own on that. So we've got our salt, pepper, and flour. And now we're gonna go back in. No, actually we're not. We're gonna put some cheese here on this layer too. So kinda like stop halfway, do some stuff, then put some more stuff on the top. So now we're getting ready for the cheese layer. All right, now for the cheese, the recipe calls for, you may think it'd be a lot more, but it only calls for three-fourths a cup of grated cheese. But I love to do this with Velveeta. I never purchase brand name Velveeta. I just call it that because who wants to say processed cheese block or <laughs> whatever. So it is Velveeta to me, even though it's not brand name Velveeta. Okay, because I have found these other ones work just as well and they're a fraction of the price. So I'm gonna put about that much and I'm gonna save about that much. Like I said, it calls for three fourths a cup of shredded cheese. I'm also going to go in with just a little whatever I have in the refrigerator in bags. So I've got some Parmesan and some mozzarella. So just for some variety of cheese, you don't have to do this. It doesn't even tell you what kind of cheese to use. It just says cheese. So it is choose your own adventure on the cheese, whatever you and your family like the best. And I'm just going to put a little bit of fresh Parmesan, a little bit of mozzarella in there. And then now back to the business of the rest of the potatoes. This really doesn't take that that long. I should make it more often. We really love it, but it is kind of big too. So I usually make it when it's family night or um, I'm taken to a pitch in or, you know, having friends over like tonight. So let's get these on here. Awesome almost to the top just kind of as layer as evenly as you can and give them a good shove this is the why i like to use this rock cry crock it is perfect for scalloped potatoes okay looking good here and then now we're going to come in with milk okay the recipe calls for hang on a cup of milk and butter two tablespoons dotted on the top so you pour the milk in dot the butter on and then you bake it in the oven covered for 20 to 30 minutes and then you uncover it for another 15 to 20 minutes you want to test your doneness of your potatoes and then you're going to put cheese and paprika on the very top and you let it stand cover it and let it stand for about five minutes now i usually like to let this stand even a little bit longer than that for one it's really really hot and for two it needs to stand a little bit to set up and i think it just gets thicker and everything kind of firms up as far as the sauce all right and this is why you want to make your dressing earlier in the day so it can cool because you are going to roll these into little dressing balls it's basically a portion for one person and you roll it up into a little ball and then you cover it with gravy which is just the cream of chicken soup with milk so yeah it just kind of elevates these a little bit looks kind of fun it's kind of like oh what's those and they're really delicious as well the gravy on there is yummy so i'm going to continue working on these and getting these ready for the oven you just bake these on about 350 just want everything to heat through again maybe 25 30 minutes something like that maybe even a little less again you just want all of this to heat through 
For our main dish, this is called Ritzy Chicken. You take a Ziploc bag and you crush up one tube of Ritz crackers, pretty fine, and to that you're gonna add one package of the dry ranch seasoning. Make sure you get those mixed up really well, and then you wanna melt a stick of butter in your microwave or on your stove top. And I just took my chicken and kind of filleted it long ways, lengthwise, to just thin it out a little bit because it was so huge. You can see how big these are. Um, you just dip your chicken into the butter and then you shake it in the bag with the cracker and the ranch mix uh, seasoning. Get it coated really well and get it on your baking sheet. And these bake up pretty quickly. They don't take real long in the oven. You don't want to over bake them and dry them out. So just kind of watch that. But I'll have listed below this full recipe. This is so good. The chicken is really flavorful and tender. It's one of my favorites. And for some reason, I just don't remember to make it very often. I may have showed it here on my channel. I'm not sure, but if I have, it's been a very long time, but this is really good, you guys. Here it is, all out of the oven, cooked up perfectly. I made some yeast rolls, just the Rhodes rolls that you do um, from Frozen. I steamed up some broccoli. There are our dressing balls, and then take a look at these delicious scalloped potatoes. I went in and put the cheese back on top, put some parsley, some black pepper, these were so, so good. The whole meal was delicious. Here's my plate. Get a little sampling of everything. We had a great time with our friends and the meal was delicious. If you're new to my channel, you may not know this, but we can't go too long without a homemade pizza. We love it. I am starting out my dough here this time around with just the Aldi pizza dough that comes in the little round dough ball. I love that, I buy it often. It was in my freezer, so I just pulled that out. I always have some pizza sauce usually in my pantry or in my freezer because I make it ahead sometimes, but not tonight. And you know I've been trying to use what I have in my pantry, my refrigerator, my freezer. So I just used this pasta sauce and it was perfect. I browned up one pound of Italian sausage with peppers and onions, which I also had the sausage in my freezer. Then I discovered I didn't have mozzarella cheese, which I did not know. So I thought for sure I had some. So I just tore up these slices of provolone, coming in over top of that with some pepperoni. And then I reserved out this much sausage to go with a side dish. So I had a half a bag of these cheese tortellini had my water boiling. I just splashed it everywhere while I poured it in. This cooks in three minutes, you guys. So if you're looking for a yummy uh, thing to get on the table quickly, three minutes, can't get much quicker than that. Next, I'm going in with this cheddar parm cheese. If you haven't tried that from Aldi, it is so good. Like I said, I discovered I was out of mozzarella, so I am making do with what I have. So it's basically everything but the kitchen sink pizza. Use what you have. So this nacho taco blend cheese, Yep, that went on there too. After I got that on, I went in with these peppers, the sweet hot jalapenos and the regular jalapenos because I just had a few of, of each really in the jar. So I put that on top, sprinkled on some black pepper, sliced up some olives, and this bad boy is ready for the oven. Now back to the other dish. I had a half a jar of this um, Alfredo sauce. It went perfectly with the half a bag of the tortellini and I just added in the sausage that was left over. Stirred this together and I'm telling you, James went on and on about this. He said, this is so good, what is this? <laughs> he really, really loved it and so I'm, I'm gonna make that as a main dish. Maybe with a salad and some garlic bread. It was very quick, very good. The pizza came out of the oven, delicious as always. That's the fun thing about a homemade pizza, honestly. It can be whatever you want it to be. This one was delicious, even though it didn't have a stitch of mozzarella cheese on it, it was yummy. Hey, here are my two kitchen helpers today. Hello, little boys. Hi. <laughs> Do you want to tell us something? You want to tell our friends something? We can put it on our YouTube. Gigi, you're getting my own okay, family wants to show you his, his painting that he made. You did a good job, Finley. And Fisher, do you want to show us yours? Wow. And it's, oh, let me see. Fisher explained that his is kind of a garden. It's rain coming out of the clouds and it waters the carrot. And his onion over there, dirt and grass, and his fingers. And his fingers that he painted. some rain. And some rain. So Reed Finley's Finley said his has some fire up here and he said it has some black fire over there. So these are my two kitchen helpers today. Keep Finley company in the kitchen. You want to tell them bye? Bye. 
bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.